Hi, welcome to another episode of the Hard Facts About Soft Skills. I'm Linda katz Wilner of Successfully Speaking, and today I have with me Colleen McKenna, the principal of Intero Advisory and a LinkedIn trainer. I'm so excited to have her here because Colleen knows a lot about soft skills. So welcome, Colleen. Thanks for having me. It's great to be with oh, you today. It's, it's my pleasure. And to start with, Colleen, I know there are so many people who are LinkedIn trainers. Mm -hmm. What differentiates you and your company? Such an important question because I talk about this a lot. We do not look at LinkedIn as social media. So it's something that I have from the very beginning of our business differentiated with. Many people think about LinkedIn as a social media channel. I certainly understand that, but I really want people to look at it as a business tool. And especially for CEOs and business owners, what I have found over the years is that they may not really understand LinkedIn, and so they just lump it in with all these other social channels, and they're like, well, it's a waste of time. And yet, when we unpack it, they start to see how they can use it for branding and business development and recruiting. So that's our major differentiator. And we really sort of wrap right around LinkedIn. All of the ways that LinkedIn can help businesses, we can help them with that. And that's a great point because so many times, many of us who are looking to make posts on for social media, mm -hmm. we think, okay, I'll do one on LinkedIn and I'll do one on Facebook and maybe one on Instagram, depending on the type of business. Mm -hmm. So that, I, I think most people do think of it as a social media platform. True. And, and so that brings us to the soft skills part. And the first thing I think we should do is talk about what is the difference between the hard skills and the soft skills? Because I'm learning that a lot of people don't, aren't familiar with when we talk about soft skills. So I'll start with that, Colleen, and okay. just mention that, that hard skills are the technical skills that we learn when we're going for a job. We want to talk about our expertise. I know how to do this program. I'm talented mm -hmm. in this. I went to school and got my degree in that. And, and those are all the hard skills. And many people forget about the soft skills, which are, I think we used to talk more about emotional IQ. Mm -hmm. And that to me is what the soft skills are as far as are we a team player? Do we show up on time? Do we share information? Do we have good eye contact? Do we communicate? Mm -hmm. And what I found fascinating, and I'm sure you know this, is that 85% of the jobs are filled with soft skills because they say you can teach somebody the hard skills, but the soft skills are tougher. Correct. So, you, so you're working with a platform and you're helping people. How do you help them they, they must be very aware of their hard skills. How do you help them convey soft skills? Well, we really want to do that in their LinkedIn profile, right mm -hmm. from the very beginning, from the top of their profile, and start to weave in how they are a good collaborator and a team player and give examples of those items as well. Because I think so many people, especially on the sales side, you know, I, I exceeded quota 300% over the last 15 quarters. And while that's great to put on your resume, it may not necessarily be what you want to put on your LinkedIn profile. And what you want to do with your LinkedIn profile is connect with somebody. That in and of, of itself is mm -hmm. a soft skill, mm -hmm. right? Being able to be approachable and start a conversation and let people get to know you and be comfortable in that space, whether it's online or in person. So I always tell people I want your LinkedIn profile to be a mirror and a true representation of who you are in person. And so talking about what you're like without using a lot of I am statements mm -hmm. also shows probably that you're a good writer or not, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because you just don't want to just fill it with I am statements. I am a collaborator, I am a team player. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a little bit more, um, sort of create a story about yourself rather than just stats and bullet points. And that makes me think of something. Full disclosure, Colleen's company has scrutinized my LinkedIn profile and helped me see some things that I should change. And I've heard you speak at different conferences and meetings. And one of the things that stood out to me is you spoke, you just mentioned the I am, but you also spoke about how you should refer to yourself mm -hmm. when you're writing your profile and now I'm very aware of that when I look at other people's. So tell us a little bit about that. 
Well, we love profiles that are written in the first person and they're much more approachable, right? I get to know somebody a little bit differently than when it's written in third person. In a bio, it's just, it's just not as um, catchy usually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I want that personability, if that's a word, to come across. And I often ask people, well, do you go to a networking event and introduce yourself in the third person? And most people are like, no, hmm, maybe I would actually stand, people would, would remember me if I did. But nevertheless, we want to, come to LinkedIn, come to these channels, and once again, be super authentic and genuine, and that comes across far more in the first person. However, don't write a whole bunch of I am statements mm -hmm. because that looks very self-centered. That was my next question. So how do you sound authentic and show off your skills without sounding like you're bragging and without sounding like the next person's profile? You, we can't have them all sound the same, otherwise we're not standing out. Right, the key here is that you do stand out. So what are some of those experiences? We sort of look at it almost like a human interest story. What's the hook? What are you passionate about personally? What differentiates you just as a human being, right? And how does that get woven in? How did you end up in medicine? How did you end up in entrepreneurship? What was it? Sometimes it's a catalyst from an experience they had studying abroad, uh, their parents, right? But we love those stories because those stories are usually unique just to that individual. We can kind of create a metaphor and, and people suddenly stand out, right? Because it's what they would talk about if, once again, if they were in person. I love profiles where people's personality comes out. You know, I think that's just much more interesting. Sure, and, and storytelling is what connects people. Even with public speaking now, they say, tell a story, a human interest story, something about yourself makes you connect. And so, for example, in my profile, if I'm going to talk about the passion or what drives me, somebody is going to connect to that as opposed to, I got my degree here, this is what I do, and I've done this for so many years, and I have this, these skills. Right? That, that's very vanilla, right? It doesn't Absolutely. stand out. And I love how you start your profile with your mission statement. Right? So from the very beginning, you're creating an expectation, right? You're sharing what you're, what's important to you and how you can help people. And so you're writing for your audience. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important, especially if you're looking for a job, write to that hiring manager, to that CEO, mm -hmm. to that recruiter. Right? Talk about how you're gonna contribute to an organization. And lots of people are in, already working. Mm -hmm. So they have to be really careful how they do that. But once again, if you weave in expertise with these soft skills, it suddenly becomes more what I call professionally conversational. So it sounds like when you're working with a client, it's not just they're writing a profile, you're correcting it, or you're writing a profile for them. You're capturing what you find their soft skills are. Well, we ask lots of questions. Mm -hmm. So we do it just as an interview and we record it so that we can go back and hear if they've used certain words more than once or how they've used those words. Because once again, I want it to sound like them. I can typically see um, from a profile, I'm like, oh, that's probably written by somebody who also wrote the resume. Or that's written by a marketing department. Because mm -hmm. they're going to sound a little bit different. It's going to just be a little bit more um, superficial. And that's not in, in a negative sense. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to capture the essence of who they are. Well, there's a person who is getting out of graduate school and they're looking for their job. Should their resume, resume be on the profile? It can be, it can be an attachment. Mm. So they can add that in as rich media. Um, they might have a personal website, lots of people do these days. It could be linked to that. But that, once again, that resume is going to not be personalized in a way that I think your LinkedIn profile should be. Once again, to stand out because it's just, when you think about a recruiter's role and they've got a stack of resumes, by the time they get to the eighth or ninth one, they all start to sound the same. That's a great point. So how do recruiters look for the soft skills? How do they identify that in all of the many profiles that they're looking at? Well, most recruiters now are doing very proactive recruiting. So they're using a platform such as LinkedIn, and there's others as well, but 
if they're using LinkedIn, they're going in and they're putting in their search very specific words. Collaborator, team player. Maybe if they're looking for somebody who's a software developer, they're putting in particular languages that that person codes in. Um, if there are certain certifications for their industry, they're putting in those certifications. So you're, they're building out very specific search strings. If they're using LinkedIn Recruiter, which many, many companies are, it gives you the ability to look at skills, create these long Boolean search strings so that they can really find the combination that they're looking for. See those people who have that on their profile and then begin to reach out to them. So proactive recruiting is really what people need to be doing to find the talent that they want. And I've heard at some of the HR meetings that I go to that artificial intelligence is doing a lot of the, the first layer of recruiting. So you may miss the mark if you don't have those words there, right? Because that's what they're looking for are those key, those key words. Absolutely. One of the first things, if somebody comes to us and they're starting to embark on a job or career transition, and this is really important if it's a switching industries, what we'll say is send us some job positions that you're interested in. Because mm. we need to identify the keywords that are in that particular job description. So we'll say send us three or four, and then we'll look at each one of them. And the words that are in that job description, we need to make sure then are woven into their profile and suggest that they are also woven into their resume. If they're not, and they're applying online, if they don't have the same keywords that's in that job description that's been notated within that applicant tracking system, they could be the perfect person for the job. They'll never be found. Sounds a little bit like search engine optimization. Absolutely. <laughs> it really is. And that's why when people say to me, I think LinkedIn's really random. LinkedIn is only random if we're random. LinkedIn's algorithm is looking at what's on our profile and who we're connected to and saying, oh, okay, this is what's on their profile. This is where they went to school. These are the groups that they're in. This is what their network looks like. We're going to give them more of those people, those opportunities, those types of groups to consider being a part of. So if somebody's switching industries, they really have to jumpstart their network in a different way and get more connected to people in the new industry so that LinkedIn suggests more of those people and it unlocks that kind of a network. So it's constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's so complicated and that's why we need somebody like you to help us navigate those waters. Well, we are always looking at that, right? And we're just looking at it from probably a more discerning critical standpoint, not critical in a negative sense, but like, hey, these are the things you need to know mm -hmm. about and LinkedIn, as all the search engines are, are continually changing and tweaking their algorithm. And that leads me to another question. I remember it was several years ago, and how long has LinkedIn been out there? It's been a while, right? Well, it is now the summer of 2019, and this fall, it'll be, they'll be 16 years old. My goodness. Yeah. So I remember why I heard about this new platform, but that's, that's frightening that that was 16 years ago. I remember in the beginning, all of the endorsements, and then you'd see an endorsement for this, and I'd see all these different people endorsed me for public speaking, and I thought, they don't even know me. And I didn't put a lot of weight on these endorsements. And then they started doing recommendations. So tell, tell us a little bit about the benefits of each one or the differences. The skills area on LinkedIn is important because those skills should mirror your keywords. So I do think mm -hmm. it's important to put those skills on there. LinkedIn is now differentiating those skills. So your top three, you can, you can pin the top three to your profile, so those come up first. Then you can have interpersonal, so those would be your soft skills, put those mm -hmm. on there, right? Then your expertise, really the professional knowledge-based skills that you have. And so now there's really categories of these skills, which I think is smart. The endorsements on LinkedIn is actually my least favorite part of LinkedIn. Um, it was very gratuitous feeling for a long time because, you know, somebody, I could pop up somebody's profile, look at their profile and say, hey, would you like to endorse Sam for these mm -hmm. skills, right? And those could or might not be the skills that Sam actually wants to be known for. LinkedIn's kind of reined it in a little bit. I, um, 
I turn it off for most CEOs mm -hmm. okay. or suggest that we turn it off. And why is that? Because they don't really, you know, at that level, at C level, they really don't need to be endorsed. They're mm -hmm. pretty well known. Right. So I think the endorsements are good for people who work independently, people who are more service-based, um, recent graduates, young professionals, because the more you are endorsed for those skills, it does raise your visibility on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. It's changing um, quite a bit. I much prefer recommendations, and I really encourage people to get at least you know three to six recommendations. They carry a lot more weight because people are actually spending the time typing something out, right? And they are putting it in narrative form. And I think that people should ask for recommendations and also make recommendations for others. And that's the, the challenge with that, especially a lot of my clients, there's confidentiality. And they don't want to admit or put out there that they had training with me. So that makes it different. But for those clients who don't care, it's wonderful to have that as a recommendation because I've learned if I just put one on my website, I could have written that. And I can't write, I could only edit, correct? I can make corrections for them to approve, but I can't write it. So it seems much more objective, uh, objective in a way, but that person is saying it. It's their words, what they're saying about you, and we can't change that. Correct. And so I think people are looking at that more than a recommendation that might be on the website. I think so. I think, mm -hmm. and you know, it, that person then shows up and stays on your profile, which is not a bad thing. I think it also, and I certainly understand the confidentiality piece, I also think that it says something really great about that professional who's doing creating the recommendation, that they take their career and their own personal professional development seriously, that they would work with someone like you. So I think it's actually it's, a really a positive. So it's an important thing for because when now would it show on their pro, they would show on their profile the recommendations they've made for somebody else. Correct. So that's an interesting point. So a recruiter might look at some of the recommendations they're making and saying, "Oh, look, they went for communication training. They take that seriously." Absolutely. I, I never thought about that. Yeah, I so, think that that can really make them stand out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I encourage people to say that in job interviews, but I never thought that the LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. can reveal that. Mm -hmm. Interesting point. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that we should know about LinkedIn? Anything that would help people with their soft skills? It, you certainly covered so much and there's so much to absorb. Well, I think the other thing about soft skills and certainly team player and being a collaborator and a good communicator and looking out for other people's interests, right? Like that mm -hmm. really great emotional IQ is actually engaging and, and living that out on LinkedIn. Help people network with one another, right? Become a center of influence. Create recommendations that aren't asked for. Mm -hmm. Ask for recommendations from people um, that you respect and admire. Share somebody else, give somebody else a shout out, right? So you can say, yeah, I love to help people, but then if you're, you never do anything on LinkedIn, it doesn't really demonstrate that you like to help people. So use LinkedIn as a platform to create a stronger brand for yourself and actually demonstrate some of these soft skills. Put them into action. And is it important to, because we've been talking all about the profile mm -hmm. and now you're moving more towards the posts. Is it valuable? I think I may know the answer to this, but is it valuable to post other people's posts that may be talking about your subject matter and, and making a comment about it? Mm -hmm. and or, or complimenting somebody on that. Is that an, an important thing to do to get your name out? Not just your own articles, not just your own comments, but to boost other people's content? We talk about that all the time. It's great to curate good content. It's great to share and give other people shout outs. People love to see people on LinkedIn. That is the social element. We mm -hmm. are doing business in a social world, right? So. It, in that respect, it is very social, and people like to see what's happening. Give people shout outs, absolutely, or share an article that they've written and talk about why this person, why their network should read this post from this person because they do have great expertise. I think it's it's just good, good karma too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Just great. Sometimes there's a lot of serendipity that happens on LinkedIn, even mm -hmm. though we talk about being super intentional. There's good things that happen because people will see you that you have no idea are out there. 
And it's not just competition. It's, it's almost embracing the other people who are doing what yeah. you do because it shows the value yeah. of what you do. I work with a lot of um, groups. There's, and, and actually, as I think about one, it's a marketing, qualitative marketing research organization. They're, they all work independently, but they come together in their association. They're probably one of the most supportive associations I've ever seen. And they're constantly doing shout outs for one another, even though they're really our competitors, mm -hmm. right? But they are friendly competitors. And if we work from this abundance mentality, it's all good. It's all good. There's enough to go around. There's enough That's for everybody. For sure. With it, especially when it's social media and it's all around the world. Absolutely. Right? There's always a lot. There's enough for all of us. Colleen, I think you answered this already, but I want to ask you as the final question, what would you say are the hard facts about soft skills? I think the hard facts are that most people don't spend enough time thinking about what their soft skills really are, what they're good at, what makes sense beyond, oh yeah, I'm a good team player. What does that mean, right? And maybe taking it from using just those words, collaborator, team player, helpful, to drilling it down to the next level. And so I think when we look at that and we can articulate that, it leaves even more of an impression. So I think one of the hard facts is really just spending time, which most people don't because they feel like, why am I talking about myself like mm -hmm. this? But putting it together and creating a presence where people can read about you, meet you, and see how you demonstrate that in real life. So LinkedIn is more than a social media platform. We can put up articles, of course not necessarily all personal articles like Facebook might be. We can put articles up there, but we also have to take our profile seriously. So that's great information about soft skills. I can't think of, uh, you have to think about the soft skills when you're thinking about LinkedIn because otherwise, like you said, you're missing the mark and it can't just be a resume on paper. Okay. Absolutely. Use it as an opportunity to stand out, be known, and build your personal brand. And that becomes a career asset, no doubt. And Colleen, if people want to contact you, how can they get in touch with you? Through I'm LinkedIn. Show sure you a LinkedIn profile. <laughs> through LinkedIn, um, through our website, interoadvisory.com, and that's spelled I-N-T-E-R-O, advisory.com. Um, we're on Instagram under Intero Advisory. You can find me on Twitter, but LinkedIn's probably the best place where I spend a, quite a bit of time. And, and I'll also mention, I know you have the Indispensable podcast series because yes. I had an opportunity to be interviewed on that. And that's wonderful to just listen to some of the interviews of some of the people that are in Colleen's network. Yeah, absolutely. So Colleen, I thank you so much. It's great information. I know this has been wonderful information for all of you out there. Thank you.